Now we're going to talk about the tRNA and rRNA molecules, which are, have a large part to play in translation. So first thing is, there was an adapter hypothesis put forth by Francis Crick in that he said that the position of an amino acid within a polypeptide is determined by the binding between the mRNA and an adapter molecule that carries an amino acid. So this adapter, this adapter we know is now tRNA, and it has to serve two functions. Recognize the base pair on the mRNA, so the codon, and carry the amino acid that corresponds to that codon. So remember, this is our tRNA molecule. It has an anticodon that's going to be complementary to the codon on the mRNA, and it carries the corresponding amino acid with it. So typical secondary structure of a tRNA, we have our 5' prime and 3' prime area. And a quick question, how do you get a mature tRNA molecule? What kind of modifications occur? So it has this so so-called um, clover shape, okay? And so we see that you have this ACC that they all have, and this is allowing us to put a covalent bond with the correct amino acid. We have stem loops. We have the anticodon. We have unique bases that are peppered throughout that are that allow us to identify the tRNA and put the correct amino acid on it. And what does that is something called amino acyl tRNA synthetase. It's this enzyme's job to put the correct amino acid on a tRNA molecule. There are 20 different amino acyl tRNA synthetases. What does that tell you? This number should be significant to you by now, okay? So how does it do it? So here is our amino acyl tRNA synthetase. It has a binding site for the amino acid. It has an area for ATP so it can be energized. And now once it takes that ATP in, gets rid of the pyrophosphates, thereby using the energy, it's allowing the correct tRNA molecule to come in, and it's going to use that energy to attach it, then it releases. What it releases is considered a charged tRNA. tRNA that's charged means it has its amino acid. Okay, so we have our tRNA. That ACC is on the amino acid acceptor stem. This is where we're going to put the correct amino acid. Now it is charged. So a tRNA with the correct amino acid is considered charged. Now, back to that wobble rule. So the tRNA's job is to find the codon that's complementary to it. Well, it's relaxed in the third position, meaning it doesn't have to be the standard rules by Shargas. Okay? So this allows it to violate Shargas rules. Why in the third position? So if we go back to our genetic code, we'll see in the third position is where we have variability in some areas, but it still codes for the same amino acid. So synonymous codons are identical in the first two, and then the third one changes. So if we relax it, chances are it's still going to have the correct amino acid with it. Okay. So the wobble refers to the third base pair. And if you look at synonymous codons, they usually vary in the third base pair. I mean, it's not always, because if you put a G there, you'll see methionine, but it usually varies in the third, okay? That's tRNA. Now, another important RNA molecule is rRNA, or our ribosome. Our ribosome's job has to break that bond, that charging between the tRNA and its amino acids, and form peptide bonds between amino acids. Okay, this is like the stage where translation occurs. So it differs in bacteria and eukaryotes. So they both have a small, a large, and then they put them together. But how heavy or the size of the small and large varies. The small is usually made up of one rRNA molecule and then a number of proteins. The large is made up of two rRNA molecules and then a number of proteins in bacteria and three rRNAs and a number of bacteria in eukaryotes. And then they are all combined in the last one, okay? So small, large, and then assembled. There are three sites. So some would argue two, some would argue three, making this exocyte, is it a true site or not? So you have an AP and an E site. 
The A is the accepting site. This is where most tRNA molecules first enter the ribosome. The ribosome, because it is two subunits on top of each other, it shifts. So just imagine these like sliding against each other, coming on in, in different directions. The P is where the peptide bond is. So there's peptidyl transferase here that forms the peptide bond between the amino acids in the growing chain, and then E is exit. So come into A, move to P to get rid of your amino acid, move to E, uncharged, then leave. And then the mRNA comes along in between the large and small subunits, and this is our ribosome. You will notice, too, that sometimes you have more than one ribosome on an mRNA molecule. When that occurs, it's called, referred to as a polyribosome or a polysome. So if this is an mRNA molecule that you need a lot of protein from, so something's going on and the body desires this protein, then you can have a lot of amino or a lot of ribosomes on the same molecule to help churn out those proteins in less time. Now, that's it for our tRNA and our rRNA molecules. Next, we're going to talk about the steps.